So as we've been taking a look at the dangle glove, which is a training aid that promotes using your stick in the correct fashion or using proper technique while you're holding your stick and while you're using the stick, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at some drills that you can practice from home to increase your range of motion and also to help you stay fresh during the off season. So these are going to be things that you can practice off the ice and on the ice, you can practice them in groups or you can just practice them in a nice flat space that you can find on your own. We're going to be using of course your stick, we're going to be using some pucks to navigate around in different styles, we're going to be using the Swedish stick handling ball and also the green biscuit puck. All of these products will be available in the link description below if you want to see reviews of them or if you want to see where to pick them up. So let's go ahead and start this off, and I hope it's going to benefit anyone that watches it. So, of course, that's, it's going to be dependent on style. Some coaches might say that you want to have your stronger hand on the top of the stick, which would then make me a left-handed player. But in my case, I feel more comfortable with my left hand, which is my weaker hand, at the top of my stick, and my stronger hand at the bottom of my stick. There's different advantages and disadvantages to doing this. Don't let anyone lie to you. Again, with hockey, this is all personal preference. It's what feels most comfortable. If you want more information about this, there'll be a video above and also down below explaining this in a bit more detail. So the first thing that we're going to be taking a look at is how to hold the stick. I'm just going to take my own top hand glove off so you can see exactly what my hands are doing. So in terms of the stick, you can see my stick's nice and straight there. To determine how to place your top hand, you want to get the V of your hand, as you can see there, along the middle of the stick's shaft. You can see that that stick is nice and straight. This is the middle area that I'm referring to. Get the V position of your hand along the middle of the stick's shaft. You want to hold that with your top hand. And your bottom hand, the distance that you want to place it, is roughly about four arms distance apart. So you want to place your forearm on the stick, get a nice indication of where your um, hand stops, and roughly where your hand stops is where you want to grab it from. This is dependent on what you're going to be working on, and again, what feels comfortable, but this is just a, a general rule of thumb to keep in mind. So the next thing we're going to work on is the position of the stick in relation to your body. So when you're practicing your stick handling, if I move back so you can see my whole body, you don't want to have the stick to your side over here because then that restricts the range of motion that you have. If you need to reach for a puck that's over that side and the stick's planted to your side over here, you can see that straight away you hit a problem. So you want to have the stick nice out in front of you. A good way to kind of engage where you want the stick to be is your top hand should be roughly in front of your stomach over here. So if I turn to the side, you can see that the stomach's over here. I'm going to have my stick roughly just in front of my stomach, which gives me a good range of motion regardless of which direction I need to move in. It's very important, again, although this may seem like a basic skill, you have to remember to cup the puck or the ball with the stick's blade. Now, as you can see, this is me cupping the puck, or in this case, the ball. Instead of me just having the stick blade nice and open and flat, I'm wrapping it around the object, in this case, the ball. So remember to cup whatever you're going to be practicing with. On both sides, so it's cupped on that side, it's not just straight up, which would make it very easy for it to bounce off for me to lose control, but by cupping it, I just give myself that extra bit of control. So when you're practicing side to side, remember to cup the puck, or in this case the ball, just to increase your control over it. Nice and cupped, maintaining my control. Also another area that I'd like to briefly uh, talk about in this uh, drill video, is that when you're stick handling, you want to make sure that the puck, or in this case the ball, is going to be around the centre of the stick's blade. You don't want to be handling too much around the heel section, or too much around the toe section, or well, that just increases your chances of losing control and having it bounce off one of the, these parts of the stick and then losing control of it altogether. So try and keep the puck or the ball in this uh, scenario over here around the centre of the stick's blade. So we'll take a look at some of the drills that you can practice while you're off the ice. So the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is your stance and overall posture. You want your feet roughly about shoulder width apart, knees bent very slightly, just get you into a good nice athletic stance. The next part is to make sure that your chest is facing up, your head is facing up. You want to get used to being able to stick handle without looking at the puck very much, or in this case the Swedish stick handling ball. So these are important elements, make sure your chest is up, heads up, knees are slightly bent, nice athletic stance. So one of the other things I wanted to go into is the reason for using the dangle gloves while we're going to be um, just practicing general stick handling drills and things that you can practice often on the ice is because as we said, the way that you're going to be using your stick in terms of the way you're holding it is very important. Your top hand over here is going to be doing the majority of the work while you're stick handling in terms of being able to change the direction that the stick blade's facing if you're going to be rotating it over for doing things like toe drags, the top hand is going to be doing the majority of the work. Your bottom hand is going to be left very loose, very free, just offering the stick and your other hand just a tiny bit of additional support, but it's not going to be doing a whole lot. So if you're getting ready to do a stick like a, a toe drag, for example, you're not going to be rolling your bottom hand over with it. Your bottom hand remains the same, which is the reason that we're using these dangle gloves while we're practicing these drills, because it just helps to kind of embed in our minds that the bottom hand needs to remain free 
which increases your range of motion. Because if you're gripping the stick like that with both your hands real tight, you can't really move it that well around, around your body. You need to get the puck over here. You can see it's very difficult if I'm squeezing the stick with both my hands. But if I loosen up with my bottom hand, I can allow the shaft of the stick's blade, to the shaft of the um, stick to slide through my bottom hand, as you can see right here. It allows me a better range of motion for when I'm reaching out to different corners. You can see that I'm constantly having the stick shaft slide through my bottom hand, which is the importance of remembering to keep that hand nice and loose, and remembering that the top hand is going to be the one doing all of the work. So as you can see behind me, I've set up two pucks. What we're going to be doing is a figure of eight drill with a Swedish stick hand and ball. We're going to just be navigating our way around those, keeping in mind what we said about leaving the bottom hand nice and loose, while the top hand does the majority of the work. So let's take a look at that. We're going to be running through these drills nice and slowly, just to give you an example of what you're going to be doing with your hands. But as you practice them, you can choose to increase the speed up. You can also choose to bring the pucks a bit closer together and navigate around them with the ball. That will increase the difficulty of the drill. But for now, I want to show you what we're doing with our hands. And the points that we need to keep in mind while we're doing this is to allow our bottom hand to sit quite loose on the stick, allowing the shaft of the stick to slide through it as we're reaching out. This drill, you're going to be using both the backhand and the forehand of the stick's blade, so it's important to allow yourself that extra reach as it just allows to increase your range of motion, and it also helps you do this drill a lot more comfortably and effectively. So again, this is going to be another drill that's going to be focused around reaching. We're going to use these pucks just as a sort of a distance to measure how far we're going to be reaching out. So you want to move them quite far apart. And what we're going to be doing with this drill over here is trying to reach past these pucks over here. This is one of the things that's good for being able to practice on reaching, keeping your hands close together when you're reached out. And then as you bring the puck back in, in this case the ball, your hands then separate as you can see over here. And then you reach out, your hands go close together again, you reach back in, and your hands are further apart. So we'll take a look at this drill. The way this is going to work is that you're just going to get the uh, puck, or in this case the Swedish stick hand and ball, and you're going to reach further out with it, you're going to catch it, and then you're going to put it back in, allowing your bottom hand to slide through the stick shaft, and repeat this. Catch it again, and when you're all the way out here, put it back in, and repeat. Your top hand is the one that's doing the majority of the work. Your bottom hand is just doing barely anything, just adding additional support to the stick. While you're over here, as we said, it's going to be your top hand again still doing the majority of the work. Your bottom hand then slides back down the shaft of the stick. Your top hand then, you're going to be using your wrist over here to change the direction of the stick's blade in order to catch the ball or the puck in the other direction. And then again, you're going to use your top hand to pull the stick through your bottom hand, allowing, to, remembering to keep this nice and loose, the stick can slide through the shaft. That's what the dangle gloves are for, they prevent you from squeezing the stick, and repeat this again. This is just something that you can work on while you're off the ice, just to give you a bit more range of motion, and to obviously um, increase on some of the areas that you might be a bit hazy about, or things that you're not so confident with. So with this next drill over here, we're going to be practicing our toe drags, which is going to be pushing the puck further away from us, and then pulling it in using the toe of the stick's blade. We're going to be using a green biscuit for this, and we're going to be practicing it around different objects, not just standing in the same spot, pulling the puck back and forth. We're going to be practicing navigating our way through it using the toe drag. Once again, all of the same basic rules apply. You're going to be using your top hand to do the majority of the work. Your bottom hand needs to remain nice and loose to allow the stick shaft to slide through it. So let's take a look at just doing the toe drag on its own, and then we'll take a look at doing it through these pucks over here. So to the side, doing the toe drag over here, just to show you what I mean. Push the puck out, pull it back in towards you, and you're going to be using your top hand to do the majority of the work, while your bottom hand slides up and down the stick shaft. And I'll show you an example of that. Push it out, you can see my hands are now together. As I pull it in towards me, my hands come further apart as I catch the puck. So we'll show you that. So one of the other drills that you can work on, as I've um, explained while you're off the ice, is just setting up a line of pucks like these and working your way, navigating your way through them with either Swedish stick handling balls or green biscuits or other pucks, things like that. If you have a hockey shooting pad, you can practice these with just traditional pucks, as pucks slide very well on those. 
But another way you can make this drill a bit more challenging, besides just going through it side to side very basically, what you can also do is add a few deeks in, so you can go through it one way, kind of deek twice, or um, stick handle twice either way, pass it through another way, stick handle twice. I'll give you an example of what I mean by this, just to add a bit more complexity to the drill and make it more game applicable. Because just practicing side to side isn't really something that you'd use in a, in a game. What I mean by that is if I take a few steps back and show you, the motion of moving side to side like this isn't going to really benefit you while you're in the middle of a match. You want to be able to practice kind of going side to side, quickly moving to the left, quickly moving to the right, as if you're trying to get around something or as if you're trying to fake the goalie. So I'll show you what this looks like by using these pucks over here. So the basic way, just to give you a quick example, if you just literally learn the basics and you want to learn uh, navigating your way through these, or a nice simple way, is to just start off with the pucks, going side to side, like that. You can either go all the way through or you can go back and forth, that's what I like to do. But just get all the way through a quick example. And just go back again. Another way you can do it is also by go through them. Go over here, maybe stick handle twice, and then go through it again. Stick handle twice, go through it again. Stick handle twice, and then go through it again and repeat this. So what we're going to be working on in this part of the video is just being able to stick handle the full way around our bodies. So not just in front of us over here, we want to also be able to make sure we can handle from the sides, both of the sides over here, and also slightly behind us over here, in case you're receiving an awkward pass, things like this always come into play when you're on the ice. So it's definitely something worth practicing. The great thing about practicing this drill or this exercise is that you need uh, not too much space, just sort of, um, as you can see around me, a nice big circle over here for you to practice navigating your way around. The most important things that we're going to keep in mind is remembering the loose bottom hand. We're going to be doing most of the work with our top hand as always when you're stick handling. You want to keep yourself in a nice athletic stance, as you can see about shoulder width apart with my legs, slightly bent. And most importantly, your legs aren't going to be moving around. You're not going to be moving around with the puck like this. You're going to be facing the same direction with your legs, and you're going to be learning how to kind of stick handle in awkward angles and awkward directions. So let's start it off. While I'm doing this, the most important things you want to keep in mind is that you want the puck around the middle of the stick's blade. You don't want it around the heel, which just makes it very hard to control it and it um, increases the chance of it bouncing off. Exactly the same goes for having it around the toe of the stick's blade, have it around the centre of the stick's blade. Remember to cut the puck so it doesn't bounce off and just practice getting used to stick handling in different angles. So I hope these drills have been beneficial. These are some simple things that you can use to practice while you're away from the ice. As I'm sure everyone in the UK can agree, practicing on the ice can be very, very expensive. So it's always nice to know that you, these ways of learning the basics away from the ice rink. All you need is your stick, either a green biscuit or a Swedish ball, or I definitely recommend getting the both of them, and just a nice flat surface to practice on. You can use shooting pads or just find somewhere flat around the house or in the garden or in a park. Now just keep the basic points in mind while you're practicing this drill, which is a loose bottom hand, which is why I would strongly recommend getting these dangle gloves. They make this whole training process much more effective and you do feel it. Because your bottom hand's doing a lot less, you need to keep in mind while you're stick handling, dribbling, any of that kind of stuff, your top hand's the one that's going to be doing all the work. And because I've got one of these on and my bottom hand is kind of, it can't do anything even if it wanted to, you do feel it in this hand a lot more. You can feel it straining a lot more, you feel the muscles work, um, working a lot harder, which is definitely something that's a good result. All of the bits that we've used in these videos, you'll be able to find in the links below, video description um, down there, you'll find all the links to any of the equipment that you want to see that we've used. And again, I hope these drills have helped out. If you want more, be sure to register, comment and subscribe, and uh, make sure you register at hockeytutorial.com. I hope again these have, been, these have been helpful. Take care till next time, guys. One last minute thing, I just want to let you guys know that we're also on Instagram, which is kind of like the latest online craze at the minute. So if you guys use Instagram, be sure to check out the link in the um, video description. You'll be able to find my Instagram page. I'm kind of getting a bit addicted to it, so um, if you guys like Instagram, be sure to check that out. Take care till next time, guys.